receiving the comments and the feedback from clients like I wear this jewelry every day I've been wearing it for years and it brings me so much happiness like to know that I was able to provide happiness and beauty for women all over the world kept me going and kept me inspired because I know that if that's what I'm bringing to the world then that's my purpose if I'm bringing more beauty and more happiness then I'm serving humanity in a, in a really positive way. So that's always been the mission and the goal behind my company. Aloha beautiful viewers and listeners all around the world. My name is Krista Ralakshmi Detten coming to you from beautiful San Diego, California. Welcome to this episode of Abundance in Action podcast. And today we have a spe very special guest um, actually on the line from Oahu in Hawaii, Noelani Love. Welcome. Aloha. Thank you so much for having me. Aloha and mahalo for allowing me to be here on the podcast today. I'm delighted yeah. and honored. Me too. It has been a long time in the making and uh, we'll get to the story how I found you, which was very magical. But I would like to introduce you to our viewers and listeners um, who, who you are so they can also get a little overview. And then as mermaids, we can dive deeper into it. So um, and see some of the topics are so dear to my heart as well. So and uh, so you are native Hawaiian singer songwriter and, and you combine soulful lyrics with ukulele melodies to empower and inspire the listener, creating social change through the spirit of aloha. As a mother, jewelry designer and yoga teacher, Nolani's motto is flow like water as she finds much of her inspiration for her art with her connection to the ocean as a surfer. With extensive training in Kundalini and Vinyasa Yoga, Mantra and traditional Hawaiian chanting and hula dance, Noelani enjoys connecting ancient wisdom to modern day life with humor and grace. Her work is in service to the evolution and awakening of consciousness of, on planet Earth. Her jewelry designs are created to empower the divine light within each of us and her music is an invitation to sing along, to activate the power of your own voice. We are the ones we have been waiting for. What a beautiful um, summary, but I know there is so much more to who Noelani Love is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot. There's a lot of stories that make me the woman that I am today, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's been quite a journey and uh, preparing this, I also managed to listen to a couple of podcasts um, where you have been a guest and also some which you have made already yourself. But uh, let's go back in time for some years ago when I actually, you know, sometimes I um, actually go to Google myself to find some pictures because with all the traveling, sometimes my hot disk, you know, they just like blow up and then I lose some photos and sometimes when they are somewhere out there in the internet. So I go there to Google myself and find those pictures. And one <laughs> of those evenings when I was in, we were living in, um, in Hawaii on the Peak Island, I uh, came over a picture um, which was connected to something called Lakshmi Lullabies. And this was the cover of your um, CD, which came out. Um, and you were under the water and it really like uh, piqued my interest. And then I saw like, wow, there is music. Like, who is this Noelani Love? Like, looks very exotic. What is it she's doing? And then one of the first songs I found was uh, Eho Mai. And um, I started to listen to it. I was like completely taken by it. I started to... Uh, write down the words, started to sing it. Uh, and then everywhere I went, I had that song with me uh, to the point when we were in Estonia doing the Tantra festival there and there with my husband um, as international teachers. And our opening song for our segment in the program was actually your song. So I don't know <laughs> if I, I think I shared it with you, but <laughs> You have traveled to Estonia too, even. 
That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. I love it. I love that the Hawaiian, um, you know, ancient wisdom is traveling around the world because as I've tapped more into my own culture and my roots as a Hawaiian woman, I feel like I've uncovered so much about myself and I just love that it's being shared around the world. Yeah, and it's traveling even without you traveling sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And also when I did a couple of my retreats, I said, like, this is such a beautiful song to start to, you know, uh, dive deeper into Hawaiian language as well. And um, I was so, like, infused by this song that there were so many times when I was just singing it in the car and just tears were running, you know, uh, on my cheeks. And I just, like, felt it, like, connected me to this, like, all-encompassing aloha and um, also the surrendering to that, you know, all-knowing love and grace and all of that and no worries and... And all of that, what Hawaii represents is in that song. So um, that song has been like my companion to many of the travels which came after we moved also from Hawaii. So thank you so much for doing that. And just with this one song, you know, making a difference in my life. Yeah, you're so welcome. Thank you for sharing that story. I love hearing, you know, how people find my music and um, as a musician, as a singer, songwriter, it's such a journey of exploring my own voice and sharing what is moving through me as a channel. And um, to hear the healing that people experience out in the world, wherever they are, just through something that I created one time is so beautiful. And I do feel that with the Hawaiian language, there's so much beauty and there's so much healing from just Hawaii for any of the listeners that have traveled here to Hawaii, uh, you know, and you experience the beautiful healing energy that the islands have. And I feel that um, Hawaii is representing that for the world. It's Hawaii holds down this beautiful spiritual healing vibration that is able to ripple out into the world. And I just feel so grateful to be able to be a channel and a conduit through my voice so that others can feel that as well. Yeah. And you were not like born like a star and singer. That has been quite a journey for you to find your voice and also have the courage to share it. And now you actually uh, even have like voice uh, lessons and coaching and also like workshops. So can you tell us the story, how it all started and um, how did you get so courageous and brave um, to take those, uh, you know, new steps every time you got to the next level? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's such a long story. Are you ready for me to talk the rest yeah, of the podcast? Of <laughs> yeah. uh, I think, uh, you know, for anybody who is discovering their voice or afraid of their voice or shy about speaking in public or even singing in public or teaching, I myself was included in that category. I used to love to sing as a child and growing up, my younger sister and I would play and sing but it became a thing where she was the better singer and I was not as good of a singer. And so my family kind of told me not to sing as much. And so I started to have a complex around my voice and not until I actually started my business and decided to be an entrepreneur and was forced to actually speak to people and share my jewelry designs and like open up and talk about my work. Did I actually feel uh, empowered to talk to people? But then the next level of that came when my son was born and I decided to have a home birth with him. And here in America, home birth is not very popular or widely accepted. It's not covered by insurance companies. And uh, 13 years ago, when I did give birth to my son, not a lot of people knew what a home birth was. In fact, I didn't even know what a home birth was until I was pregnant. And my friend said, oh, why don't you have a home birth? And I thought, what is that? Uh, and I started to do more research. And I decided that I wanted to have a intimate home 
birth experience in the comfort of my house, in the comfort of wherever I wanted to be in my house. And that experience for me was so empowering. And the thing that I think helped me the most was creating sound without feeling inhibited. And I've started to do work in in the birth world as a doula and supporting women in, in labor in their experience of giving birth. And what I've seen is that so many women feel constricted uh, or restricted in the throat area. And that throat chakra, the fifth chakra, is directly con- connected to our second chakra, which, which is our center of creativity, reproduction, and birth. And so when this is tight, our throat, our second chakra, our pelvis is tight as well. And so I was able, in the comfort of my home, while giving birth to make the sounds, the very primal and guttural sounds. They weren't necessarily beautiful like you would think of a beautiful pop song or an opera. It was more animalistic and primal, just deep guttural ah sounds. And for me, that helped me to get out of my brain and into my body which is what needs to happen, getting out of the mind space into the body, and then even activating that spiritual portal of like, I am just moving this energy through my body as this baby is being birthed. And so as I was creating those sounds and able to make those very primal sounds, it activated something within me that I didn't even know that I was capable of. I didn't know that I was that powerful to birth a child. First of all, that was the first time I'd ever had that experience. And that was so empowering. But then to just feel that the primal energy that I embodied, that activated my voice in a way that is indescribable. And from that point forward, I started to learn how to play the ukulele because I just wanted to learn a new craft and sing and have something to share with my son. And I started learning Hawaiian music, of course, with the ukulele, with a young Hawaiian woman. She was my teacher. She was 14 at the time, Emily Abrigo. And I I think I was 24 or 25 when I started ukulele lessons. And she was, she is a beautiful singer. And she would make me sing with her while I was playing the ukulele, which was very challenging and definitely out of my comfort zone. But in copying her and trying to reproduce the sounds that she was making, I was practicing. I was using the muscles of my throat and actually able to um, work them. It's just like our yoga practice, for example. I always use this example. If we're not practicing yoga, our body's going to get tight or not be able to do the movements. But if we're doing the chaturangas, we're going to develop those muscles so that we can continue to do it. And so the voice is like that when you practice it, when you use it, when you are actively repeating and using sound, then it gets better. And so I tell this to everybody, all of my students, like it's just practice, we're just having fun. And so the more that you do it, the better that you get. And I felt so empowered through singing um, that I actually, I eventually went to a yoga teacher training because that became part of my, my lifestyle as well as incorporating breath and movement. And once I started teaching yoga, I wanted to share music with my students through the mantras that I was so inspired by. Mantra has definitely been something that's changed my life and it helped me to also find my authentic voice. And I think what was so simple about mantra for me in able to find my voice um, is that it's repetitive. So you can repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and you don't have to be thinking about what the words are And you get lost in that mantra. You get lost in the sound vibration. And that is what the power of mantra is. It's a tool for the mind. It's a tool to transform you. And so I was experiencing that a lot through the mantra and starting to write my own ukulele melodies to these ancient mantras. Because, you know, when we hear Sanskrit mantras in the yoga world, they're very guttural and very monotone, usually like, Om Namah Shivaya. And I thought that was very beautiful and it's fun to explore that route, 
but I wanted to, being Hawaiian and incorporating the ukulele, I wanted to create my own authentic version that resonated with me. And in doing this, I wanted to share it with my friends, my family, my students. And what I discovered through just play, just through having fun and getting out of the box, um, is that it the mantras have actually become more how would I say, accessible to the Western world or to the Western ear that's so used to like beautiful sounds that aren't like monotone. And so that's how the music has just kind of evolved on its own. And I like to think of music as it moves through me, like it's its own entity. It's its, its own creative energy that isn't mine necessarily. It's just a gift that moves through me. So once I started to... Um, become really confident with sharing my music, I decided I wanted to empower others to be able to do the same thing by teaching them how to play ukulele, how to use their voice, how to play with it, and how to write song. Because what I understand is for me, especially when I'm in those moments of anxiety or depression, when I'm not feeling my best, writing for me is such a powerful tool to get myself out of that funk and to, uh, to rewrite the script and change my story. Because there's all these thoughts in our mind all the time about what we think is happening and how we perceive ourselves or how we're projecting out into the world. But when I can write it down and then review it and become the observer rather than being in it, then I'm able to say, oh, this is what's happening. Here's what I see happening within myself. Well, is that what I want? What do I want? Let's rewrite the story and then change it. And that's where affirmations are so powerful. And what I like to share with my students is creating their own personalized affirmations that they can turn into song by playing them on the ukulele. And then that becomes their mantra or their affirmation throughout the day, rather than whatever popular song you're hearing on the radio, that's someone else's story and maybe not so conscious or uplifting. How can we change the story so that it's uplifting ourselves and therefore uplifting others? Yeah, so it's almost like you are changing a little bit also like the music culture. Exactly. That's that's my personal goal is to really uplift and shift the vibration on this planet through music. Because if you think about what's happening on the radio, like, are these songs serving society and humanity? I have a 13 year old son. And as he's starting to watch TikTok and become more active out in the world, I'm listening to the music that he's listening to. And I don't really like the lyrics that he's hearing. And I don't think that it's empowering him or inspiring him. And so my intention is to be able to share lyrics that are empowering, that are telling stories of inspiration and uplifting to the human spirit and psyche. Mm, very nice. Um, very needed right now. I had a really amazing um, adventure on the Big Island um, close to Rainbow Falls um, many years ago. And uh, there was one rock which was by the river. Um, I think recently they actually have closed down that area and you can't really like um, access it anymore the way it was uh, usually like open. And I went there and sat by the river and then suddenly I started to make these like different kind of like voices and noises coming out of me. And they were also very like primal and very like different and when I had ever been like um, among other people, I would have never dared to do those sounds, you know. And as no one was there, I was just there with the nature. I just started to play with it. And it almost felt like um, maybe even some Hawaiian words and like maybe some, I don't know, Hawaiian ancestor was sitting there as like, oh, there is a channel open here. Like, you know, <laughs> let's uh, yeah, just download this to Crystal, you know. And uh, we were actually doing a retreat that time. And just two days later, we went to Pololu Valley and uh, walked to the other side uh, with that group. And then suddenly I just felt like, oh, maybe we could do like a little like voicing or chanting here. And we just formed a circle and started the whole group. And, and I as, as kind of like activating the whole group 
started to do that. And then uh, suddenly from the blue sky, it started to rain. And I don't know if it's just a Hawaiian thing, but we were just all blown away. And everyone said that, Crystal, you shouldn't like uh, sing anymore <laughs> because you ruin our, you know, they were all from Estonia and they wanted sun. So they're like, I don't know, like, how is this even possible that rain is like coming down? I don't know. Have you had some like magical stuff like that happen to you too? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And in Hawaiian culture, when it rains, it's a blessing, you know, like yeah. we, we honor the water because without water, there is no life. And so, the the most sacred places in Hawaii are the places with a lot of water uh, because if you have access to fresh water then you're wealthy you're rich and there is abundance there because life and food can grow and so um, actually a lot of times if I'm supposed to perform or sing somewhere as soon as I'm about to perform it starts to rain and my name, Noe Lani, means heavenly mist. And mm -hmm. I mean, I think we're all spiritual beings. I don't think I'm any more special than anybody else. But I do feel like I bring the rain. And But it'll only be for a little bit. It won't continue to pour during the session or the event. It'll, it'll be a little blessing, whether it's a wedding or um, a performance for music. And I mean, I do think when we activate our voices and when we're calling in spirit you know spirit will respond and so again it's a blessing yeah and I think uh, uh, Lono was probably really you know um, activating there with me and is probably also very connected to you uh, one of the gods connected to also water and many other elements so really cool but um, is there something now when we have um, probably also many women watching and listening this show are there maybe a couple of tips you would give um, to them uh, how they could start to work with their voice and release all these projections and I know myself also like I, I, I've been part of even several choirs and stuff but still that you know inhibition and um, whatever other like fears is like holding back so so are there a couple of tips you could share where people could start yeah absolutely one of the first things that I teach in my workshops is self-massage um, because our throat chakra you know there's so many muscles not only in the jaw area and around the lips but also in the neck in the shoulders um, and so I teach a lot of self-massage in the beginning so just starting to massage like the back of the shoulders and the back of the neck right here um, you can just take your hands like so and kind of like squeeze because all of this is connected to our sense of communication and expression so if this is tight physically this is going to be tight emotionally right our voice is going to be constricted if the muscles surrounding the voice and how it's expressed are tight so self-massage is really key. Um, I like to use CBD oil or I have a special blend called uh, my ether blend, which is connected to the throat chakra. It's a bunch of different essential oils that I've blended together that are spe specifically to activate the throat chakra. So I like to use that and even getting into the front of the throat and near the lymph nodes. And then I really like to take my thumbs and like massage like this around my bottom jaw this area seems to get really tight for me and then up right where the jaw the top jaw and the bottom jaw connect I like to massage this area as well so self-massage is one of the first things and I think not only because the area the throat chakra can be physically tight but also learning to be comfortable with touching yourself a lot of people aren't comfortable in like even just you know, rubbing themselves or touching themselves. And I think as, as humans, we need touch and we can enjoy that pleasure that comes from that. And so when we're able to get comfortable with touching ourselves and seeing where things may be tight or where we might have room for more pleasure, and more joy, that's going to be really key. Because if we can experience that pleasure 
by bringing it to ourself, whether we're massaging our jaw and creating an openness that feels really good, then we're going to be able to do that with our voice as well. Like how, how do those two things relate if you think about it? So that would be the first one is self-massage. And then the second thing I would say is just to remember your childlike innocence. There's so many people that think they're bad singers. Like I shared in the beginning of this podcast, I also thought I was a bad singer. And I just want to remind people that there's no no such thing as good and bad in singing. Like if you imagine yourself as a two or three-year-old when you're just learning how to express yourself and find your voice, they didn't think about how they were sounding. They were just playing and having fun. And so I want to invite people to remember that childlike innocence and to just play with their voice. And I do this one uh, vocal practice with the harmonium where I'll just play a few chords, a few keys, and we'll just make the sound of OM, the sound of OM, A-U-M, and creating that sound over and over and repeating it, but repeating it with different pitches and different tones and just playing. So you might, you know, usually in a yoga class, if you're joining together in the sound of OM, it's a very low, like, OM. But how can you just play with that? Maybe you want to be higher. Oh, or even higher. Like, what does that feel like for you? And how can you just play with the different tones, like water, letting it flow? Like, oh, and having fun with it without thinking about it so much. So that's one thing. That, that would be the second thing. And then I guess the third thing is breath. So reminding yourself that the breath is constantly moving in and constantly moving out. So as long as there's breath moving, then that's how the voice is going to be allowed to be, create sound. So breathing in fully, expansion across the lungs, nice tall spine and shoulders back, and then exhaling Ah, like letting the breath move through you so that the sound can be a current that also moves through you. And it's often also, I think that most people don't um, even like breathe consciously. So when you do these little exercises, you actually also start to pay more attention and the awareness about your breath will be also bigger. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so easy to forget to breathe consciously. And if you don't have a breath or yoga practice or some kind of movement practice where you're consciously breathing, I highly would suggest that to support your, your voice practice. Yeah, so cool. So um, I have been also very fascinated about your stories and also your love about ocean and water and surfing and all of these things, um, would you also share how that love started and um, where has it taken you? Yeah, absolutely. So I didn't actually grow up in Hawaii. I was born and raised in the United States um, on the mainland in North Carolina. And my mother would bring myself and my, three, my two siblings, my brother and sister and I out to Hawaii every summer. And so we would just spend the summers at the beach and my grandfather would take us to the beach a lot. And he actually taught me how to swim in the ocean. And so we would go snorkeling and boogie boarding. And I just fell in love with the ocean. And again, that playful childlike innocence of exploring all the sea creatures, um, looking into the water and seeing all the fish on the reef and playing in the waves like that just brought me so much joy. So it started from a young age. And then when I finally made the move out to Hawaii in 2005, I wanted to be a surfer girl my whole life. So I started to make moves towards surfing and I um, actually tried surfing on a board for about a year and I wasn't progressing or getting any better. And so I switched to bodyboarding and body surfing because I grew up um, swimming competitively. So I, was, I am very comfortable in the water. And so bodyboarding and body surfing 
allowed me to catch a lot more waves and to have more fun in the water. And then only in the last, uh, I'd say two and a half, three years have I actually really been surfing on a surfboard. And that's because my son really wanted me to start surfing with him. And I was afraid. I, I was like, I'm not good at surfing. I'm, I'm going to stick to bodyboarding. He's like, please, mom. And so I paddled out with him and um, I got hooked. I actually fell in love with it again. And I think just having the experience over all the years of living in Hawaii and bodyboarding and body surfing, I finally got the confidence to know where to be in the lineup and how to, where to sit and navigating the currents as well. And um, so now I'm, I'm, I'm hooked. I'm addicted to surfing. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. And I love that my son got me into it and that we get to still have that as a fun pastime together because it's such a healthy outlet for both of us. Yeah, not only it's also such a good workout, like especially now, like, you know, over here in San Diego, all the gyms are closed and, you know, you have to be very creative. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's such a good workout. It, it definitely mm -hmm. clears my mind. It makes me to it helps me connect with nature and my son as well. And also my community. It's especially during COVID times. It's like a social experience when we go out surfing because there's people and you can talk and catch up with friends so it's been really nice yeah very cool I myself I got into surfing actually uh, first time in 2005 I was in South Africa and my friends were signing up for a surf um, kind of uh, it was like a surf school and I had no idea like how this even like would work or not but I was like okay it's something new let me try as well and the first uh, month we had the lessons like every Friday. So it was like good, very good timing, like after very intense academic week uh, studying in Cape Town University and then uh, having that like afternoon of um, uh, Friday, just going out. And um, it was a really nice beach as well, like lots of sand. So it wasn't that difficult to like, you know, just fall and let go and not be worried to hit the rock or coral or something, you know. And um, the first month I couldn't even like stand up. Also the waves were of course very strong. And I was even like questioning, what am I doing here? And it looks so easy when you look on the side, right? <laughs> and then you start to do it yourself and it's like, oh my God, like this is impossible. But then once you get up, like, oh my God, it feels like you are flying. And uh, then it's many times you get hooked and then it's really hard to stop. <laughs> Totally. Yeah, that's awesome that you that you went for it and you kept going. And South Africa is no joke in the water. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you have um, Atlantic Ocean on one side and then you have Indian Ocean on the other side. So and I kept that going for five months. I was there. I, I didn't give up. So by the end of it, like I I could already like catch some like bigger waves and felt like uh, quite com comfortable. But also I got into lots of the times I got into like complete like washing machine in the waves and stuff with the board and the whole thing. And that was very scary. And I think that even like infused a little more of the uh, fear of depth water, which I had actually also prior to that. And then one of the trips I took to Big Island, I actually found a water therapy class where we dealt with that and also like um, transformed that fear into more water courage and then um, of course that was a huge change because then I could also swim with the wild dolphins and that's like you know if you have weird fear of depth it's like impossible to swim with them <laughs> because yeah. then you should just like watch on the shore so wow that's and, awesome that you found that course to get over the fear that's great yeah yeah and then after that uh, trip to Hawaii, I had actually one of my clients reaching out to me and heard like, hey, you, I heard you you released your fear. Can you help me? And then I just started to play with it. Like you said, you know, play with your voice. So I started to play in the water with people and then developed my own course to release uh, water fear or whatever other fears. So so that was like also, yeah, Hawaii has like um, infused me with so many intuitive like sparks, which I've taken to other layers and levels. So has been always so fun. 
And I continued also surfing and trying surfing in so many different places like Australia and um, uh, was also in Spain and um, and yeah, like uh, so many like Mexico, different places. So it has been a fun thing to try out as a as a tourist as well. <laughs> Great. That's so cool. Yeah. So um, now I would like to ask also because you um, are a real artist you are doing a jewelry and there is also you have some videos about it and people can also will put the page also later into the podcast notes so they can go and and see what you have can you tell the story about it because you have actually done it for quite a while since 2005 as I saw yeah, yeah. So I have I started designing jewelry when I was in college just as a hobby for fun. And I was studying studio art and Spanish, so I double majored. And I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do for a living. I was just doing what most Americans, children who go to college do is just um go because they're supposed to. And I loved designing jewelry it was such a passion for me and it kept me up at night I didn't want to do any of my homework anymore I just wanted to make jewelry and so I was in class and my friends were and classmates were asking me like where did you get that jewelry it's so beautiful and I was like well I designed it I I just made it and um I started getting custom inquiries from friends like, oh, we have this like special event coming up. Can you make some earrings to match this dress? And so I started doing custom pieces for my friends and classmates. And I realized that I wanted to do that for a living, that it could be a lucrative business and fun. And I had never taken any classes in economics or marketing or accounting. So I didn't understand any of the budgeting side of things, but I just knew that, oh, like this is working and, um, and I love it. And so as soon as I graduated, I just started my company and I called it at the time, Noelani Designs. And I started just selling um, at my mom's friends' houses. They would host like these home shows and invite me in to share my jewelry with their friends. And the women would women would get together and shop and socialize with a little bit of food and maybe some wine. And it was really fun. And that's how I started my business. And then from there, I started doing farmers markets and more craft fairs and holiday events. And eventually, I opened my own store. Uh, here on the North Shore in Haleiwa Town. And that was in 2013. And so by then, um, I'd been in business for eight years and had been working out of either my home or at one point I was in my friend's garage and had a whole setup inside of there. And I was doing all online sales as well as in the retail store in Haleiwa. And that was really fun, um, just being able to have a location that people could go to. And at that time, I also was doing wholesale to other locations and stores throughout the islands, also in Japan and other parts of the world. And had um, at, at any point, I had at least two or three women that I had trained to make jewelry and were making jewelry for me. At one point, I think I had five that were working pretty full time for me and, um, making the jewelry so that we could distribute it out to all of the wholesalers that we had. And all of them were here in Hawaii and uh, in-house. So it was really great because I could keep an eye on quality, which is really important. And I just loved being able to work with crystals that came from the earth that were gifts from Mother Earth and to create unique designs with them that were became talismans for the women that were wearing them. And just receiving the comments and the feedback from clients like, I wear this jewelry every day. I've been wearing it for years and it brings me so much happiness. Like to know that I was able to provide happiness and beauty for women all over the world kept me going and kept me inspired because I know that if that's what I'm bringing to the world, then that's my purpose. If I'm bringing more beauty and more happiness, then 
I'm serving humanity in a, in a really positive way. So that's always been the mission and the goal behind my company. And then um, in 2017, I decided I didn't want to have the retail shop anymore. And now because of COVID, I'm so grateful that I, that I got out of the commercial space at that time. Um, I wasn't spending as much time with my family, particularly my son and my friends or in the ocean as I wasn't spending as much time doing the things that I loved outside of work. And so I decided to close the shop and go solely online. Um, and I opened up a little small studio really close to my home in my neighborhood, just, uh, and that's where I am now. So I have a little studio that I work out of and all the operations are based here. And then we have customers who can come and shop here, but it's really close to home. And so I'm able to be more present with my son, which is really important to me. And it's also very close to the beach. So I'm able to go to the beach with ease rather than sit in the traffic that we actually have a lot of here on the North shore. And so it's been really fun to watch the transition of my company and allow it to evolve. And so it was, I think it was maybe around 2016 that I actually rebranded instead of Noelani Designs into Noelani Hawaii um, because I realized, oh, like Hawaii is such a portal of healing and uniqueness that I wanted to have that incorporated into the brand. And not a lot of people know or would assume that Noelani is a Hawaiian name unless you have some kind of understanding of Hawaiian language or a friend with a Hawaiian name. And so, yeah, it's, it's been really cool to, to be able to activate so many women into their light and their beauty that they have. And that's what I feel with my jewelry is that, you know, we're, I'm not creating these giant pieces that are like the focal point of a woman's outfit, but rather their accessories, their accenting the natural beauty and the light that each woman has to shine. And I love that jewelry is able to do that because they really are talismans for women. I love that the crystals come from the earth and that they hold different vibrations and stories and healing powers that are unique to that stone and that those can be rippled out onto the wearers of the jewelry. Yeah, it so sounds to me also that your jewelry is almost like a heavenly compliment to those uh, women who are wearing them. Yeah, I love that. Exactly. Yeah. Because Lani, if I remember, is also a word which is connected to heaven, right? In Hawaii. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Lani is heaven. Yeah, mm -hmm. so... So you are bringing those compliments from heaven with your jewelry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I used to be part of a really beautiful hula dance group as well in on the big island. And um, my kumu also gave me a Hawaiian name, uh, which is Wailani. So uh, you are Noelani, I'm Wailani. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Be and beautiful. I don't know, how, how would you um, translate Wailani? So why, just like I was saying earlier, and this is really interesting because of what you shared about your story of your uh, retreat participants in Pololu Valley, which is also on the Big Island, why is water, specifically fresh water? And so why Lani means fresh water from heaven. And so our names are similar in that Noi is mist, and there are so many different ways of saying water and rain and um there's there's literally so many different ways to say it depending on the direction that it comes from depending on how the wind is depending on the angle the density of it there are literally hundreds of different ways but why is simply fresh water and then lani is heaven so your name why lani would mean heavenly water yeah that's uh, yeah. so cool. And um, that actually is very connected to that, you know, that water fear story, because as I was developing it further, 
And as I also have background in Tantra, so I actually started to take some Tantra moves into the water as I was working with people in the body temperature water. And what was born is something I call Vantra. So I put water and Tantra together. Ooh. And then, of course, the name Vailani also makes sense because it's like, you know, I help people to remind them their heavenly water, which is inside of them or which they are as well, you know. And then yeah. all the blockages which are there. So with those certain moves or stretches can be released. So um, it has been like amazing journey, like how how I like shook me up with that. And then, of course, the dolphins, they, they were like the main healers uh, for so many years, what they did and inspired. Okay, so uh, where can people find you if they want to read more, dive more into Noelani's uh, universe? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would say I'm really active on Instagram. So if you want to follow more lifestyle, you can follow me there on Instagram at Noelani Love, just my name, no dots and no um, underscores. And then also on YouTube. I'm starting to post more content on my YouTube. So Noelani Love on YouTube. And then if you want to follow any of my music, I'm on Spotify and Apple Music, SoundCloud as well. And um, I'm also, if you would like to purchase any jewelry, noelanihawaii.com is my website. So you can shop there and we ship all over the world as well. So no matter where you are, we can get it to you. And yeah, if you have any questions about anything we spoke about today, whether it's the Ripple Effect online voice course or Kangen water, uh, music or jewelry, feel free to reach out on my Instagram and you can just send me a DM and I'll hopefully get back to you within a few days. And um, yeah, I just thank you so much for featuring me here on this podcast today, Crystal. And for allowing me to be here and share my stories with your listeners. I hope that some were inspired and feeling empowered from hearing my story and my journey and knowing that, you know, we're all humans doing our best that we can on this planet with the knowledge and the understanding that we have of this life and that we can always change or we can choose to flow like water. Yeah. Very beautiful. It was a real honor to have you. And we'll also prepare a special page with a little gift. Um, and uh, so all the listeners and viewers can download that from Nolani and um, indulge yourself deeper into some real uh, goodies as well. So, and uh, to sum it up, I want to say that you are, um, I made this like little. Um, almost like it looks like a sun, you know, with all the pop-ups, which we talked about. So, you know, the podcast is called Abundance in Action, and you are a good example how you actually have created so many different outlets to um, express your talents in so many channels and ways and packages. Like, you know, we talked about voice and we talked about yoga uh, surfing and um, Hawaii and water and jewelry and you know there are so many ways you can express yourself and also if you create it in such a way that you share it with the world that others can also see it like you have your music on different platforms you know so others can see it and also purchase it so all of these talents can also actually start to become your abundance in action and also make your dreams come true. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. So thank you so much. Uh, mahalo. And I wish all the best to all of your projects and I'll uh, keep following you. And I hope that this podcast will create many more ripple effects uh, out there in the world from our co-creation here. Thank you so much. Mahalo. 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 Okay. And to all of our listeners and viewers, thank you for being here today. This was um, quite a mouthful, so probably worth of two episodes. And um, please, as always, like, share, comment. And if you have a little extra moment also, don't hesitate to also comment or also uh, leave us a review to our Facebook page or 
to uh, iTunes and may your life be filled with ripples of aloha. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.